What's really important for Uber and Lyft drivers is that other states join the fight, right? Start the movement. It was started in California with the AB5 New York gig worker debates now highlights the risk for Uber and Lyft investors, right? Investors need to know, and let me make this very, very clear to investors, right? That we are an army, right? Of 3 million drivers that is not happy, right? And we will protest, strike, push for change in the laws until they wake up, right? Listen to this, dear investor, until they wake up and understand that we built this company, right? So if we are not a talking point, if they are not willing to build bridges uh, over to us, your investment in Uber and Lyft will never, ever be safe. We're relentless, right? We, we drive on the street, we protest on the street, and we will shout on the street. So investors, you need to be extremely cautious. This is a movement we've started. Why? because they simply ignore and disrespect, right, the drivers that help build the company. So what do we do? Um, we use social media. We get out there at hubs. We get in front of the media, and we make noise, and a lot of noise. And as long as we keep on making noise, the investor will never have a safe investment with Uber and Lyft, right? And it is really important that we, we the drivers, keep on putting the pressure on the states and push and push for this change, right? It says here both companies are under pressure to get profitable but are facing employment law changes in California, New York, and elsewhere that could have onerous consequences. The bottom line is that drivers are asking for more pay. We are getting paid below the minimum wage and these companies turn a blind eye, right? They, they have zero, zero respect for the people that haul in the money each and every day, right? And you, the investor, you, Wall Street, you, the financiers, why you see the growth of Uber, you don't see the profits, right? They're making losses. And it is a very, very unsafe bet for you because as long as we're in the picture and we're not being treated right, right? Uh, your, again, let me repeat, your investment will never, ever be safe, right? And as a voice for drivers, we've made tremendous inroads. We slap them down in California. We'll slap them down again in New York. And we will push for new gig worker laws. I can see this being, you know, uh, 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 talks that are literally met somewhere in the middle. The state wants this. The company wants this. And they're going to have to talk and hash out a new gig worker law. And only when that is in place will the investor safely know it's time to invest, right? But until then, we will push state by state for the change and for better pay. So neither the Uber or Lyft um, has turned a profit and changing laws in the most important markets could place the goal further out of reach, as I've just explained, on the heels of California AB5. New York lawmakers are aiming to pass an employment law that would redefine the standards by which a worker is, is considered an employee. California's version went into effect this year, and New York could introduce its own version, version in a matter of months. According to a report in the information, New York lawmakers are considering certain clauses that would distinguish their version from the AB5. We welcome that. For example, the bill could define employees more narrowly than the California law does. But stakeholders um, are also weighing a collective bargaining provision that could spell costly headaches for Lyft and Uber down the road. A bill could materialize as soon as the spring, according to the report. We eagerly wait that, await that report. Whatever winds up being proposed in New York, the costs for the ride-hailing firms, both of which are aiming to eke out a profit in the near future, could be substantial. Look, they have used this money and they've grown, they've pumped it back in, they haven't shown any profits, but the state is not seeing anything out of it and the drivers are being exploited on that journey of growth, right? So it's obvious the state wants to see money. It's very, very obvious the driver wants to see more money and 
the selfish ride hailing companies can't just hold on to those monies, reinvest, reinvest, not show profits, right? So pressure, my friends, pressure, 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 and connecting with like I'm doing right now, I'm talking directly to investors. We're at the table here. We're at the bargaining table. We are not going anywhere. So if you think this is just a safe bet between you, the investor, and the company, you're extremely mistaken because like I said, you have an army of 3 million drivers out there that will not shut up, right? Now, whatever winds up being proposed in New York, the costs for the ride-hailing firm, both of which aiming to eke out a profit in the near future, could be substantial. Analysts at Wedbush Securities estimate that AB5 could translate into 30% higher labor costs for Uber and Lyft, an added expense that they can ill afford. Uber told investors it'll turn profitable by the end of the year, while Lyft has set a profitability target by the end of 2021. And both are under pressure to spell out clear plans for getting in the black, right? That's all that the investors are interested in. It's all the companies are interested in. Um, how do we get into the black? How do we start showing profits? Not so fast, my friends. At a recent Goldman Sachs conference, Uber CFO Charles and Chai downplayed the contagion risk of AB5, which has attracted some controversy for its potential consequences for freelancers spreading to other states. In addition to New York, New Jersey also recently weighed its own version of a gig workable. Go New Jersey. Illinois could soon do the same. Go Illinois, right? We want these states to put pressure on these companies so that they start negotiating, right? I, I very much doubt that you will be uh, reclassified as employees. They will have to come up with new gig worker laws, right? Because what, what Uber and Lyft say is that we are independent contractors. No, we are not true independent contractors, um, as the words say, right? We don't have the ability to accept or decline trips um, in the majority of the states, only in California so far. So we are not treated as independent contractors, right? If they want to give us true independent contractor status, listen, I'm all for it, right? I'm all for it. We get to set our rates. We get to set and decline. We get to accept and decline. We can choose which company we want to drive with. We can choose when we want to drive with, right? That is true IC, independent contractor status, right? But um, the states... They want to turn us into employees. I understand it. They want to see money. But at the end of the day, this is going to be a hardcore negotiating phase for months and months ahead. And they will meet in the middle and they will create new laws. And we should and we will come out better as drivers, right? As long as we keep on making noise, right? I think that other states are seeing what's going on here. And so we've seen some back... Um, off in terms of some of the incremental discussion, whether it would be New Jersey or some others that we're seeing, Chai said. Not sure what that means. Still, in any increase in labor costs in California and New York uh, would be onerous. Wonderous. New York City is the largest consumer market for both firms, according to their respective S1 filings, and a large majority of their rides in the United States are concentrated in a handful of population-dense metro areas, including Los Angeles and San Francisco Bay Area. That is really where we have made the most noise. Uber and Lyft appear to be diverging slightly in how they plan to handle new laws, although they have collaborated on an, on an upcoming ballot initiative that would leave the fate of California's AB5 to the voters. Uber and Postmates have also sued California, claiming that AB5 is illegal but a judge recently denied an injunction to block enforcement of the law, right? So, as I said in previous emails, they are paying shills for signatures to get onto the ballot, right? This is how they're spending the $90 million fighting the drivers. They do not want this AB5 to pass. Uber is experimenting with allowing drivers to set rates for certain fares in California, among other product tweaks, on the notion that such changes will allow them to circumvent AB5, right? And two videos ago, I showed you, on the one hand, they are now allowing drivers to accept or decline trips in California, but God forbid you accept or decline a few too many, right? They then start threatening you with language that you will get less rides. So 
You know, it's it's unbelievable how these companies operate. It truly is, right? It's unbelievable how creative and what they will do to circumvent the laws in order not to pay their drivers. They 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 must truly have the worst, um, you know, company labor company worker relationship in the world this company right because they have really turned the drivers against the company the drivers are out there protesting striking and fighting daily right there is no peace and harmony whatsoever between uber and lyft and the drivers meanwhile lyft is also seeking to reassure shareholders that if new laws increase labor costs it won't eat the difference at an investor meeting in December, Lyft CEO Logan Green said that prices go up for consumers will pass 100% of that on if its labor costs increase, as they should. But they, all they're trying to do is collect more signatures and put the living fear into the passengers by saying, hey, you know what? We will pass that cost on to you. You will eat that cost, right? That is a direct threat. That is direct fear marketing so that these people sign off on the ballot, right? We want to guarantee you the very, very lowest fares, and we want to guarantee that we do not take care of the drivers. That's really what he's saying on you. Shame on you, CEO Logan Green. Investors may not know yet how the chips may fall in the employment law debates happening in California and New York, but another question mark is how riders would react if, as Logan Green warned, warned ride-hailing firms raise their prices to match labor costs. If what used to be $10 a ride costs $13 instead, would riders take a pass on the service entirely? In 2016, a group of researchers examined Uber's surging pricing algorithm using data provided by Uber and found that higher prices led demand for rides to drop by a factor of about half. In other words, a 30% increase in price led demand to fall by 15%. But that's a short-run reaction to surge pricing, explained Austin Goolsby, an economist at University of Chicago's Booth School of Business. We don't know what the long-run sensitivity is, I don't think, right? So, you know, the bottom line is, um, this is not, and let me summarize for the investor, this is not a safe bet as long as you have an army of unhappy drivers out there. Thank you.